Hello everyone. Uh, so in this tutorial we're going to look at using the Freely Delay Bank uh, to get some very interesting and creative delay sounds. So uh, first the, the FL Studio Delay Bank, it might seem a little bit overwhelming. Um, you know it's got a lot of knobs, eight different delay sections. I'm just going to bring it up to show you. So it can look pretty you know over the top uh, just for a delay but it's very complex and you can actually do quite a lot with it. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of this but there is an official documentation um, on the ImageLine website which I'll leave a link to in the description. But for a quick overview in this video, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's eight numbers and sections across the top and these are all separate delays and so there's they're separate from each other, they're all different delays and they can feed into each other with this next knob which we will be using. So you can have completely different settings on each one and they can all be active at the same time. Um, I honestly don't know if anyone would use all eight but you never know. Um, so the first section over here is the input settings. And this allows you to activate or deactivate the delay with this on knob. Um, solo the this specific bank. And it also allows you to pan um, or adjust the volume of the input signal. Then we've got the filter section which is basically just filtering the input sound. Uh, we're not going to be using that uh, in this tutorial. And feedback section is where we're going to do most of the work. And this is where you adjust the, the delay itself, the echoes. Um, this is feedback filter. And so that's that's to fil filter the uh, feedback sound. We're not going to be using that either, but it's pretty self-explanatory. We are going to be using grain. And grain here is short for granulizing. And it's a process of chopping audio up into smaller chunks. And you'll hear the, the significant, sorry, you'll hear the effect that that has uh, when we start shaping our delay. And finally, you've got out. And this just controls the, the out signal, the output signal. So you've got next, which feeds into um, the next delay bank. So it'll be into two. You've got pan and you've got volume. So the sound we're going to be using uh, for this tutorial is a simple pluck sound and I'll leave a link to this in the description so you can download it if you'd like. It's pretty basic um, but we're going to make it sound very interesting. So you can use your own patch if you want, and it's not a problem, but it's, it might not sound as good with the certain delay settings we're going to use. Uh, the thing is with these kind of delays is that you can't just use uh, the same patch on any instrument. You actually have to adjust it accordingly. So that's something to note. If you want to use your own patch, then you might want to um, experiment a bit more. So the first thing we're going to do is actually set up um, some mixer routing uh, so we can side chain our signal later. And we're just going to assign this clip to a new audio track. Insert one. We'll rename this uh, pluck, for example. Turn it down a little bit. You don't have to, but I'm just going to do that for now. It doesn't come too loud. And then we're going to send this, sorry, side chain this into an empty audio track um, and we'll, we'll name this send or, or delay, we'll name it delay and after that we're going to go back to our pluck track and turn this knob up to 100% uh, because we want the delay to actually have a signal we want the delay to be able to use the signal um, audio signal and if that's at zero that's not going to have anything to actually delay. 
So after doing that, we're going to add a 30 limiter here. We're going to click um, comp. Let's change the compressor. Scroll up to number one, which is our sidechain input, and we'll leave it now. We're going to adjust that later, and you can turn the limiter off for now. Um, okay, now comes the fun part. insert a fruity delay bank and we're going to adjust some of the settings up here first uh, which is the global settings so first thing we're going to do is uh, turn the dry knob all the way to the left so it's at zero percent uh, so we haven't got any dry signal going out and that's good because we don't want the sound to double up if we had the dry, dry signal going through uh, this plug sound would double up on itself and it would just be overly loud and that's not what we want and that's actually all we need to do for the global settings section uh, of course we're not needing to touch this, these sections here these filters we also don't need to touch the in section um, at the moment so the first one we're going to do is, is play the sound with the default delay and see how it sounds So it's not bad, it's quite boring though. Definitely going to be more interesting in that in the end. First thing we'll do is turn this stereo separation up uh, to 34%. It doesn't have to be 34 exactly, it's just a, a number I'm giving. And the volume can go up to 65 or around that. And we'll leave these other two parameters the same. And we're also going to change it to ping pong by clicking there. So now we've got this. I'm actually just going to adjust the tempo here. And so it's a little different to how it was before, but it's still quite boring. Uh, and this is where it gets interesting with this granulizer part. So what we're going to do is adjust the grain division, which is this first um, fader. We're going to adjust this up a little bit until it says number three up here. And you can hear the difference that this makes. So, also put the grain shape up to 45%. Now you hear the, the difference that it makes to the delay sound. Um, it sounds a bit more smoother and round and we're going to be using this a lot especially in our other banks we're using three banks by the way for this delay sound the final thing we're going to do in here is adjust the output parameters so we're going to turn the volume up full to 125 percent now we're going to pan it slightly to the right we're going to turn the next to about three o'clock which is about 85% or 80% in my case. Might seem a little loud, but we haven't actually uh, uh, activated our sidechain compression, so it will be okay for the moment. Uh, it'll be okay then, sorry. Uh, now on to bank two. I'm trying to speed things up. The first thing we're gonna do is adjust the time to four seconds. And it should snap there because we've got tempo based time um, activated. Also turn it on. You might want to do that. And we're going to turn the offset all the way up to about 100 milliseconds. And ignore that. Um, and that, that what that does is it affects the left and right stereo spacing. And we can just leave everything else as it is there. For the feedback section. Uh, next we're going to go into our grain granulizer and turn this up to 14 which is quite near the top and finally we'll leave 
uh, the grain shape where it is. Turn it next up to 62 or 60% 60 around that. Pan. Uh, we'll turn it to the right again a little bit, but we may adjust this later. And volume left as it is. So now we've got something that sounds like this. So it's getting quite interesting now. It doesn't sound like a typical delay. Uh, it's definitely got some significant sound to it, you could say. Uh, onto our final bank. And this, this is a bit different this one. We're going to adjust the time to 5 seconds. If you want it to be crazy, you can make it a number that's not tempo based. Uh, like between 4 and 5. But that's quite hard to keep on beat. Of course, turn it on. And we're going to leave these where they are. And the other thing we're going to do is turn this grain division up to 4. And finally, leave the next at 0 because we're not using another delay. So there's no point in adjusting this. Uh, we'll pan it to the left a bit to even out the stereo space because these other two are panned to the right. And we can leave a volume as it is. And that's about it for our delay. And as you can hear, it's quite, um, it's quite panned to the right. So we're just going to turn this one to the middle. So it's not sounding too bad, uh, but we can make it sound better by using this limiter. So what I'm going to do here is do it by ear, and you can follow along. I'm going to turn the threshold down a little bit. Now I'm going to adjust the ratio. should be coming in so that sort of cleans up the sound a little bit um, and it doesn't clash with the sorry the delay signal doesn't clash with the original signal and one trick you can use is this head knob here if you adjust that it'll make it sound a bit more percussive so you get those clicks coming clicks coming through um, of course you can play around you could take the the dry signal away by unassigning it or unsending it from the master channel and that means you just have the delay. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. And it's all about experimentation, finding out what works. Try it with different sounds, try different delay settings. Um, one thing you can do is add some reverb before the delay. And that gives it even more of an atmosphere. And maybe EQ it a little bit. And you can EQ it to your heart's content because it's on a send channel meaning it won't affect the original signal. And yeah, I hope you got something from this uh, tutorial. And leave a comment if you have any questions.